How is it possible this truck driver ended up in a trauma hospital? We investigate why a local man who committed no crime was nearly killed over a traffic ticket. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Raj Mathai. And I'm Jessica Aguirre. It is a citizen's worst nightmare pulled over by a cop on a remote road and you end up in a trauma hospital after a disagreement over a simple traffic ticket. It happened to a Bay Area resident on his way home on I-80. We've been investigating the story for six months and it doesn't seem to add up. What we do know though is this man's life was changed forever. Let's bring in investigative reporter Stephen Stock and Stephen, how cooperative has the CHP been in this? Well, Raj, we asked for public records back in February and have yet to receive any public records from California's Highway Patrol. Its own Internal Affairs Division says there's been a 17 percent jump in the number of disciplinary actions against CHP officers in the last five years. But they won't talk in detail about this case because the truck driver involved is now suing the Highway Patrol and the officers involved. So we went digging on our own and uncovered a story we found very hard to believe. It all happened around 5.30 in the morning on a remote part of the interstate up in the Sierra Mountains, far away from any witnesses. We want to warn you, parts of this story and some of the pictures you're about to see may disturb you. Fifty-eight-year-old Kazachenko can retell with clear precision the moments from that morning back on September 2, 2011, out on Interstate 80, westbound out of Reno, headed home to the Bay Area. He speaks in his native language, Russian, recounting up until that moment of the incident. That's when Oleg's Kazachenko goes silent and cannot speak anymore. For 40 minutes, Kozachenko sits there, insisting he wants to tell his story, but the words won't come. But these pictures speak for him, confirmed by medical records, a crushed left orbital eye socket, multiple facial fractures, a broken left arm, loss of consciousness, a concussion, possible neurological damage. Why did this happen? According to court records, it was all because Kozachenko would not sign a ticket, citing him for driving his truck for too many hours. The truck driver says he wanted to read the ticket first. So the court records show Highway Patrol Officer Andrew P. Murrell forcibly arrested him. In court testimony and in the initial report filed along with the ticket, the 220-pound Highway Patrolman Murrow said the six-foot-tall, 165-pound Kozachenko was actively resisting and exhibited extraordinary strength. And they finally give him this citation. They Stuart Katz is Kozachenko's attorney. He tries to tell him that, hey, I'm not violating the logbook. According to the initial report filed by Officer Murrell, he and fellow officer Jim Sherman pulled over Kozachenko after getting a report of a sleepy driver. These pictures taken by officers on the scene after the confrontation with Officer Murrell show a bloodied Kozachenko lying on the side of the highway, his hands cuffed behind his back. He's punched, his arm gets broken, they're on top, he's face down, his ribs get fractured, uh, they're cutting off the oxygen for a significant period of time. Officers charged Kozachenko with driving over hours and DUI, but both those charges were dropped. A blood alcohol test came back at zero, totally clean. White powder seized by the officers from his cab turned out to be table salt. Finally, officers charged Kozachenko with misdemeanor resisting, obstructing, or delaying a peace officer. That was dismissed after a judge threw out the evidence after a defense motion and testimony about what happened on the freeway. The only time I've seen worse injuries as a result of police actions are when someone's uh, was shot. I think seven bullets hit him. We called and went to Andrew Murrow's work office to get his side of the story. But each time he said he could not talk on advice of his lawyer. His attorney said there would be no comment other than to deny all charges in the civil suit. In his response to that civil suit filed in court, Murrow contends, quote, the force employed was reasonable and not excessive. How is it possible this truck driver ended up in a trauma hospital? Well, again, the, uh, there's ongoing litigation in the case. I can't discuss 
uh, why it is that he suffered the injuries to the extent that he did. Acting Chief Ken Hill, who oversees the Valley Division of CHP, which includes Merle's squad, could not address specifics of the case because of the lawsuit. But he says he reviews every use of force incident by an officer. And in this particular case, I don't remember. Um, it wasn't something that jumped out as me and being, oh my gosh, uh, we have some serious issues here. Does the public out there have anything to fear from your officers? I will tell you this, if the public, when they get stopped, they simply comply with what they're asked to do, they have nothing to fear, nothing to fear at all. Hill says every CHP officer goes through extensive training in the academy. We obtained records showing Merle was also a licensed fist boxer while at Fort Hood. I promise you that our officers are not out there beating people up for without any justified reason. And I'm not saying that we beat people up. What I'm saying is sometimes their actions, um, their actions cause us to have to escalate a particular use of force to be able to take them into custody, to protect ourselves, to protect the members of the public. Whatever happened out there that morning, nearly two years later, it still clearly haunts Oleg's Kozachenko. Justice would certainly involve the CHP taking a hard look and seeing whether either of these people should be driving around with a badge and a gun. As for whether or not there was any internal affairs investigation, punishment, or retraining, the CHP simply won't say, citing the law enforcement officer's Bill of Rights. According to statistics from CHP's Internal Affairs Division, the Valley Division, where Merle works, led the state in the number of disciplinary actions against officers in 2011, the year this happened. We can say that Officer Merle continues to work for California's Highway Patrol. As for Oleg Kozachenko, because of his injuries, he no longer works, and his family is seeking both financial and medical help for him. Re Jessica, Raj. Okay, thank you.